I recently read the book Eat That Frog by author Brian Tracy. Do you routinely distract yourself with easy tasks as a way to avoid doing harder, much more important tasks? Do you find yourself cleaning the house, organizing files, running errands, or replying to every unread message in your inbox when you really should be focusing on something more important? Although many of the small activities that you do during the day might seem productive, they aren't the best use of your time at that moment. What you really should be doing is eating that frog. Brian Tracy says your frog is your biggest, most important task, the one you are most likely to procrastinate on if you don't do something about it. It's also the one task that can have the greatest impact on your life at the moment. We all get distracted by the small, insignificant, but easy to digest tadpoles swimming around our pond of potential things to do and lose sight of the frogs. So let me show you how to find your biggest frog and then eat that frog. The first step to finding your biggest frog is considering the consequences of doing nothing. Gather a list of everything you could do, should do, or ought to do. Now imagine doing nothing on that list for an entire week. Imagine you went for a long drive across the country without a phone or a computer. What are the long-term consequences of doing nothing on that list? Which of these unfinished tasks could be fatal to your role within your company? Brian Tracy explains that we all take on roles in our professional lives, and those roles need key results to survive and thrive. Brian says the key result areas of management are planning, organizing, staffing, delegating, supervising, measuring, and reporting. These are the areas in which a manager must get results to succeed in his or her area of responsibility. A weakness in any one of these areas can lead to underachievement and failure as a manager. As an electrical engineer, my key result areas were collecting data from the construction site, verifying engineering calculations, producing engineering design drawings, developing construction checklists, and conducting design review meetings. A lack of results in any of these key result areas would have held me back from receiving promotions and getting more opportunities in that role. A complete failure to perform in any one of these key result areas would have quickly led to my termination as an electrical engineer within the company. A key result area is analogous to a vital organ within the human body, like the heart or the brain. If these organs stop functioning, the entire body stops functioning and you die. To come up with a list of key result areas in your current professional role, consider the reasons why you are on the payroll or why you have customers that keep you in business. What key results are essential to keeping you on the payroll or keeping your business open? After you've come up with a list of key results in your current professional role, look back at that to-do list and task by task, Visualize the long-term consequences of not doing a task for an entire week. Which tasks have a significant impact on your key result areas? When you consider the long-term consequences of not doing something, you'll see that not doing several items on your list would be uncomfortable, but not fatal. You might upset someone by not responding to their email or missing their meeting, but it doesn't have a significant effect on your key result areas, and it won't lead to the death of your professional role. It's like removing the appendix or wisdom teeth from the body. These are non-essential body parts. You can surgically remove them from your body and still survive. It would be painful and you might have a scar, but you'd still survive. Any task that doesn't significantly impact the long-term health of your current role is a tadpole, not a frog. So the first step to finding your biggest frog requires asking yourself, what are the long-term consequences of not doing this? Does it affect my key result areas and is it vital to my current professional role? The second step to finding your biggest frog is considering doing one thing all day. Of the things that you've identified to have long-term consequences on your key result areas, what one task could you do all day that would contribute the greatest value to your company? Brian Tracy says that if you ask yourself that question three times, the three tasks that you come up with will be 90% of the contribution you can provide your company. Brian Tracy says perhaps the most important word in the world of work is contribution. Your rewards, both financial and emotional, will always be in direct proportion to your results, to the value of your contribution. 
So if you want to find your biggest frog, ask yourself, if I could do only one thing all day long, what one thing could I do that would contribute the greatest value to my company? You could replace company with client if you happen to be a freelancer, or replace the word company with readers if you happen to be a blogger or author. At this point, if you still can't decide between two or three frogs, simply focus on the one frog that you've most avoided eating. Brian Tracy says, eat the biggest and ugliest frog before anything else. Do the worst first. By doing the worst first, you'll receive a great sense of relief and satisfaction upon completing it, which will provide you with the confidence you need to eat more frogs. So now that you've found your biggest and ugliest frog, how do you eat that frog? The best way to eat a big, ugly frog is to focus solely on the next bite and remind yourself of the last bite. I do this by focusing solely on a small section of a task that I can complete in the next 10 minutes. I ask myself, what initial result can I achieve in the next 10 minutes to get me moving in the right direction? Whenever I feel particularly overwhelmed, I just remind myself of the last bite I took, of this frog or any other frog. Reminding myself of a recent success gives me the confidence to take the next bite. So it's time you start letting those tadpoles swim by and start focusing on eating your frogs. By finding your biggest frog and then eating that frog, you will maximize your work time so that you'll have more time to spend with people you care about most doing the things you love doing most without the weight of a frog on your shoulder. That was the core message that I gathered from Eat That Frog by Brian Tracy. It's a great book on personal productivity that I highly recommend. If you would like a one-page PDF summary of insights that I gathered from this book, just click the link below and I'd be happy to email it to you. If you already subscribe to the free Productivity Game email newsletter, this PDF is sitting in your inbox. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a productive week.